Daniel Clark, hello. Doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are with musician, composer, keyboard extraordinarist Daniel Clark in his studio. Since having kids, the, the big difference between not having kids and having kids is when inspiration hits at 2 a.m. before kids, you go for it. Uh huh. With kids, you've got between 10.30 a.m. and 11.15, <laughs> you better be inspired. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, I've learned to really tap into the, the, the little bits and pieces that, um, that happen in between things. The girls might be playing around me. An idea hits, like I'll be at a piano. We have another piano upstairs, but I'll be at this piano, for instance. We got the play site for the girls right here. Exactly. And then we got the no, so piano playing. over there. And so then I might be like. doing that and if any of that sticks in my brain then I'm like oh I should work on that later you mm -hmm. know what I mean and how do you so, get that down so that, well that might become later so I'll pull out my phone maybe make a quick voice memo uh-huh you know what I mean we're lucky we have that these days and I've been thinking about actually let's go over here on the organ because I was uh, I was gonna be playing an organ trio gig that ended up getting canceled because of COVID lame so I had this little thing going around in my head that was like... I like to write something that's going to uh, amplify whatever the scenario is. And I want it to be simple, and I want everybody to sound great playing it. So I'm always thinking about particular scenarios. Um, in terms of experimentation, though, like if I'm at home, if I'm here, like, you know, I'm a keyboard player, obviously, but like, I have other instruments. Yeah, I there's a drum to. set over here we were just playing. You know, that I'm, I was playing badly. By the way. Well, yeah, and me too. But I'm terrible at all these things. But but um, but that doesn't mean I'm I'm terrible for the situation that I'm doing it for. I have a ton of drum machines. They're all over in, in between. But this is a DX um, Oberheim DX, which is so sick, nasty. So many great tunes. A lot of hip hop jams on here. Um, and then this one is uh, Lindrum, which is like a big time 80s drum machine. But I love to, to hook these up if like if I'm creating something that's in that realm, that's maybe not necessarily jazz, maybe I'm making a track. I like for it to be raw. I mean, these all of these things exist in a computer these days, but I like, for me, I like to sort of be hands-on and be a little bit crude about things, you know, somehow. And just sort of be like, look, here's the beat. Okay, maybe there's another section or whatever. And like, you know, you, it's not, I don't get too deep into all that stuff because I like to sort of just flow in the moment and, and knock it out. You know what I mean? Like even just how Deck the Halls came out. It was like, oh, cool. That's like two phrases of the melody or whatever. And it's like, it's, everybody knows it's Deck the Halls, but we can have some weird fun with it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, you so what you're just describing right there, like what you have right there is an electronic machine. This, yeah. And then you're, you're, you're contrasting it with another electronic machine, the computer. What's the difference? Uh, well, this. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? Okay, so you're literally That's the touching yeah, yeah, the yeah. machine and its parts. Yes, and I love that. And but it's also cuz you can you can program stuff in a computer all day long and it it's great. You can make it as complex and it's you know in a and it's great. But there's something about I just did this weird thing here and I literally played it in to this inch, to this thing. And, you know, I, I guess, you know, it, with drum machines, you can quantize parts. So it's like, you know, which makes it everything in its place. Like you play something that's loose and it tightens up the screws, right? Mm -hmm. No, don't do that. Keep it nice and clean, like nice and freaky. You know what I mean? And it's just like, it's all good. It's just, it's, it's human. It's, it's, somebody did it. You uh -huh. know, that's kind of where I'm at, essentially, with that stuff. I mean, I like to listen to all kinds of music. I mean, like, whether it's, you know, loose or not, you know, that's fine, you know. But the way I like to create is sort of just in the moment, let's go quick. We can spend our whole lives writing the perfect song, or we can write a trillion really cool songs, some of them better <laughs> than others. You know, so you're a proponent of lots of starts. Yeah, lots of like start, start this, start that. Start yeah, that. exactly, exactly. Yep. Because like if I have like the Lindrum set up over there, and doing something, I might knock out a few kind of like starts. Uh -huh. You'd be like, oh, this is cool. I think this will be cool. Maybe go to a keyboard, you know, and then like it'll go away, and then like it'll come back. For me, when I play a little bass on something, it starts to get um, real. You know. There's something about it because I'm, I'm a keyboard player, so it's like, oh. But when I play like some loose bass on something, it's like, oh, I hear what this is gonna be. Uh, oh, a different, different bass note than the chord that I'm playing or whatever. It's like, oh, that's better or whatever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like little stuff like that. Like that happens in a childlike way on like the guitar or the bass for me. You know what I mean? As opposed to here, you know? So what I'm hearing is, you know, this is your place of expertise, right? This yeah. is the place where you've been trained and you spent uh -huh. most of your hours as a musician. Mm -hmm. And then you've got this like space, this literally in instruments, right? Mm -hmm. Specific instruments, which is to say the guitar, the bass, the drums, uh -huh. where you get to be a child. Yes, you get I, to that, that's the part just, I like the best, like drums for sure. And then the other side of it, like sort of my life and creating is people, you know, I'll, I'll record tracks here a lot. You know what I mean? So like people will send me their songs to play on, you know? Uh-huh. And that tends to be mostly pop music or whatever. So that's kind of, that's a fun endeavor. So when I do that stuff, I generally will throw them a couple of tracks. Like, hey, here's a nice, easy, out of the way track. And here's one that's a little more bold. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so I like that. I like doing that stuff too. And a lot of that comes from here, I imagine, especially with the pandemic, huh? Well, it it, uh, it kept me floating during the pandemic for sure. I mean, not that people had any money to make records or anything, but when no one, you, well, there, you, you're you tour a ton, so like I do, and I did. I don't know that world that, that ship may have sailed for me. You know what I mean? Just because I got a lot of boxes I need to tick at this point, but I'm so stoked to have been planted in one place for the last you know basically couple years. And I'm just really connected to home and, and the musicians around. And, and, and as a musician, it's like you, you kind of can't plan for what the next thing is sometimes, you know? Yeah. And I've, you know, I've thrived in that. That, that doesn't bother me, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but, I, I, you know, my, I had a father that kind of was a forward thinking, you know, like, hey, put money away, you know, live like you're never going to work again. And then... There I was never working again, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But luckily not in a stressful place, you know what I mean? Um, financially. Dad, yeah, your dad yeah. also a, a strong musician in his uh -huh. own right. Indeed, yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Um, but, you know, had, you know, got jobs, you know, ended up being a, you know, you know, sold insurance, you know, kind of had gigs or whatever, always played music, but, you know, um, the scene changes and that's all good, you know yeah. what I mean? I had a good run, you know, being a tour musician and doing all that, but, um, you know, you, you, we'll see. I mean, who knows, you know, right. but I do love being home. That's for damn sure. <laughs> I want these cats, I want people to be able to enjoy playing this music and, I, and sound really good on it right off the bat. Like, if you know this much about music, you can play this, you know what I mean? 
like so as a jazz musician we have you know we have standards standard songs that we know you know uh somewhere over the rainbow or you know what i mean when i fall in love like these are these are songs that are incredible melodies and incredible songs for a reason you know what i mean you can just put the chords and a melody in a book and trust that people will just take that and go do it justice I taught the uh, Allstate Virginia Jazz Group recently, which was awesome. It was incredible to be with these kids. Uh, and this sweet saxophone player um, was kind of getting a little stressy because, you know, he, he didn't have a lot of, uh, one of the songs we just put in front of him right then. He was like, oh, I don't know if I can learn this, you know, I, I don't have the time. And, you know, I'm, you know, he's kind of just, ah, oh, he's like, is there a room I can go to to practice? And I was like, hey man, I don't, I hate to break this to you. There's never a room, man. <laughs> like, you're going to be, first off, you're going to be great. You're going to be fine. But there's never a room. So you're going to have to learn to do it in the scenario that exists. Okay, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we should play drums on this. Oh, shoot. Uh, Not while we're recording. I can't do both. Uh,